Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Valley Baptist Church. So glad that you guys could join us for our Sunday School Hour. If you please turn to 174-174. My Jesus, I love you. study your word. Lord, I do pray that you please be with us this morning, that you just um, have us to open up our hearts and be receptive to that word, Lord. Um, that uh, the, stu the, the study is great, Lord, and that uh, we're able to uh, sharpen our swords so that we're better prepared, Lord, and that um, our fire is lit to serve you. Lord, I do pray that you please be a pastor, give him utterance and boldness. Lord, I pray that uh, this message go out into the airways, Lord, uh, as it goes out to the internet. Let it just be an encouragement to those who may be watching. Lord, it's probably in your glorious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School Hour. I am Pastor Serrano. You're watching Valley Baptist Church. We're located in the Lower Valley of El Paso. You can find our webpage at El Paso, uh, valleybaptistelpaso.com. Our address, our service times. You can see us on YouTube at Valley Baptist El Paso and also on Facebook Live on Sunday mornings. Um, right now, we cannot go live on YouTube until I get 50 uh, subscribers. So if you have not yet subscribed, please, I encourage you, put us past the 50 so that we can go live on Sunday school also. All right, we are studying currently the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, we are on page 121 this morning. Page 121, the place of signed gifts. And uh, we stopped there uh, last week. And uh, I think we're in letter C. Can, can you verify that? Yes. Okay, so we're in letter C. The perils of, the perils with signs. Of course, the word perils means dangers, the dangers. The dangers with signs. There is a danger of seeking after signs. There is an extreme danger in seeking after sign gifts today. This is because Satan is well able to produce 
that is imitate signs and wonders. We get it at Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7, 10 to 12. Exodus 7, 10. The Bible says in Exodus 7, 10. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, not the magicians of Egypt. They also did like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, the faithful folks that are here this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for a brand new Sunday, Lord, a, a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord God, that we can meet together freely, without interruptions, to worship you, Lord, and to learn from your holy word. Guide us and lead us now, Lord. Teach us what we need to learn this morning and help us to apply it to our lives so that we can have a closer walk with you, Lord. And also be aware of the dangers uh, right now, Lord. We love you. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Teach us and guide us. In Jesus' precious holy name, we ask it. Amen. So as you can see here, when Aaron threw his rod down, it became a snake. Uh, but Pharaoh and his magicians were able to do the same thing, okay? That's the danger of seeking out the signs because Satan can also do signs. He's a master of doing signs. Okay, look at verse 22. Exodus 7, 22. The Bible says in Exodus 7, 22, And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So he... Uh, he was like, who is this guy you're talking about? I can do the same thing he can. And so his heart got hard. He got prideful. And he would not submit to the Lord. Look at chapter 8, verse 7. Chapter 8, verse 7. <clears throat> the Bible says, The magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land. So they, they did the, the serpents, right? They did the serpents. And then they did the... Uh, the blood in the river, they were, they were able to do that, copy that. And then they did the frogs, they were able to do that. Uh, 8 7 says, And the magicians did so, their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land. So they're keeping up so far, right? Verse 18, And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon the beast. So when they got to the lice, they couldn't copy that, okay? So remember that the ten plagues that, that uh, Moses did in the presence of the Pharaoh, those ten plagues were, each plague was a destruction of one of their gods, okay? The, uh, the frog god, he was destroyed, okay? The, the, the one from the river, that was destroyed, okay? But when it got to the lies, they couldn't copy that. So they're... Lies got, got destroyed. Okay? And so, each one, the Lord was showing that uh, there's nobody more powerful than the Lord. Amen? Amen. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Then we go to the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of lights. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? Whose end shall be according to their works. So, men can pretend that they are apostles. Men can pretend that they're teachers. Men can pretend that they're pastors. Men can pretend anything. Okay? And you have to be aware of these things because, uh, 
this is very dangerous. You, you might just be in a church where, you know, everything's not right and everything, and uh, the, the scriptures are being followed and everything, but uh, the, the danger, I think, the danger comes when the person himself or herself does not study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's what the danger is. You see, you come to church and you say, well, the pastor said it, good enough for me. You see the danger there? You just took whatever they gave you. And you did, yourself did not search it out if it was there. And then you could be uh, led astray that way. So you have to be on guard, okay? This is why it's so important. I'm going to hit that hard today. You have to know your Bible. You have got to know your Bible. You have got to know your weapon. This is your weapon. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, okay? You have to know your Bible. You have to be familiar with it. Look at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Twenty-one to twenty-three. Mark thirteen twenty-one, and then if any man shall say to you, "Lo, here is Christ," or "Lo, he is there," believe him not, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take heed, and behold, I have foretold you all these things. Jesus is telling us ahead of time that this is going to happen, okay? We are living in the end times. We're living in the last days. The Lord Jesus is coming back. The last the last event in the in the timeline of the of history, okay? The last event in the Bible is the rapture. That's next. That's when Jesus is going to come back and take up his church out of the world, okay? And everybody that has, has uh, repented of their sins, and has trusted Jesus, the personal Savior, is going to go up with Jesus, okay? And those that are dead who die, who are Christians when they die, they're going to come out of the graves with new bodies, and together we're going to meet the Lord in the air. That's the next event. So, I mean, there's so much going on right now. And if your eyes are not uh, open and your ears are not your ears are not peeled, <laughs> or is it the other way around? <laughs> ears open, eyes peeled, right? Um you, you'll just go through the life like, oh, it's just another day. Yeah, nothing's happening. But come on now. You know. You, you have ears. You have eyes. You can see. You can, you can hear things. Okay? He's very, very close by. And uh, as a matter of fact, right here, check Mark 13, he's talking about future events. Okay? And think about how long ago that was. Okay? Over 2,000 years ago, he said these things. And we're right there right now. This is it right here. It's happening right now. Okay? <clears throat> uh, I could get sidetracked, but I'm not going to go get sidetracked. Second Thessalonians. Let's keep it in the Bible. Let's keep it in the lesson. Uh, Second Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 9 says this is a, the Bible here through the Apostle Paul is describing the Antichrist. Okay? This is the one world ruler who everybody's going to worship. Now you do not know who he is. You're not going to find out who he is because we're going to be in heaven when he is revealed. Okay? But many say that he's, he's alive right now. He's alive ready to take his place. And if you look at all the events that are happening in the world right now, everything is being set up for him. Everything is being set up for him right now. Okay? Right now. Ah, I just can't help it. I just can't help myself. The World Health Organization, here I go, okay, uh, is going to have a meeting here in the next month, I think. Okay, where all the countries of the world are going to basically give up their, their sovereignty, okay, to the United Nations. And the one who's going to run the whole show is going to be the WHO, the World Health Organization. All right, what does that mean? It means that they're going to say what a pandemic is and what pandemic is not. 
They're also going to tell, tell you what uh, shots to take and what shots not to take. They're going to control you that way, okay? You're not gonna be able to travel anywhere. You know, we were talking about this maybe like uh, five, 10 years ago, about the real ID. Everyone remember that? The real ID? Well, guess what? It's here. The real ID is here. I tried to get a passport to, uh, uh, to go to Mexico, and, and I got it, but through that, I found out how up to date they are. It's here. The real ID is here, okay? And so you're not gonna be able to travel, okay? In the future, you're not gonna be able to travel unless you got your, your shot records up to date, okay? They're gonna give up. It's basically gonna become like a passport, and you're not gonna be able to go here or there. Uh, they're gonna, they're not going to allow you to do anything, okay? Your money is in the bank right now. You basically, we're gonna all lose about money in the bank, okay? Because they're gonna turn a switch, and I'm talking about within six months or so, they're gonna turn the switch on, and everything and all the banks in the world are gonna become digitized. You know what I mean? Think about how much money you have in the bank, okay? Well, guess what? It's just gonna become a number now. No more cash, zero cash. No coins, no nothing. It's just gonna be a number. That's You got your number. When you get your deposit from your, your pension or whatever, it's just a number, it's just a number over, okay? And they're going to be able to control, okay? All your spending. They're gonna know where you're making your spending, what you're spending your money on, okay? They're gonna know if you're, if you're uh, you know, uh, overspending in an area, and they're gonna call you on it. And it's gonna become like that, why? Because the Bible said it would be, okay? Revelation chapter 13 is right there. Okay, Revelation chapter 13. If you haven't read Revelation 13, it's the introduction of the Antichrist, okay? Right here in this verse, the lesson is introducing and telling us about the Antichrist. What is he telling us? Even him, that's him, who's coming is after the working of Satan, okay? With all power and signs and lying wonders. So the Antichrist, this 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 man, is called the, he's called the beast when he's introduced in Revelation chapter 13. He's called the beast, okay? And then another beast is going to come. He's called, he's, that's the false prophet. And Satan and the false prophets are going to empower this beast who is Antichrist, who's a man. The number of the man is 666, okay? He's going to be empowered. And then the false prophet, not the Antichrist, the false prophet is the one who's going to say, you can buy groceries today. Because according to our records, you bought three uh, gallons of milk last week, so we're gonna have to reduce you down to one. We're taking too much milk, okay? And also you got three loaves of bread, we're gonna cut you one loaf of bread, okay? And by the way, you don't have a passport, no groceries. It's in the Bible, it's in the Bible, guys, we're here. But we live our lives like, oh, everything's wonderful, everything's okay, and nothing happens. But it's happening, guys. It's happening right before our eyes. You gotta wake up, you gotta wake up. Revelation 13, here we go, see that? The lesson is taking us to Revelation 13. Here we go. Revelation 13, I was not even expecting it. There it is, right there. And I was trying to avoid it, <laughs> okay? Revelation 13. This is just too. <laughs> okay, it, the lesson t tells us to read verse 13 and 14, but we're going to read verse 1 because I want you to see it with your own eyes, okay? Revelation 13. This is, this is, uh, uh, now remember, remember this time context right here, Revelation 13, okay? Who is going to experience this right here? Everything that's going to happen in Revelation, look, Revelation, the book of Revelation, is the end times, okay? In chapter six, all the judgments of God, that God is going to bring on the God-hating world, they begin in chapter six, because the seals are open, and Jesus opens the seals, and every seal that he opens is a judgment on the earth. Why? Because they rejected God. They rejected their creator. Okay, and they followed uh, idols and they turned against God. They were not grateful, okay, but became evil in their imagination. And so those are judgments that God is going to bring. Now, right now, everyone has the opportunity to be saved. 
everyone. This is why now is the time to get saved because when this happens, it's too late already. It's too late. Okay, so Revelation 13, if the judgment began in chapter 6, just think about it. If the beginning of chapter 6, that means that if you didn't get saved before the rapture, guess what? You're in chapter 6. You're going to experience everything. Now, are we going to get out clean? Are we going to just be clean? Now, I know the scripture says that we're not appointed to wrath. Right? Well, we're not appointed to wrath, but there's preachers being, being arrested. Okay? In other countries, they're being killed. That sounds like wrath to me, right? So, we're not going to get out scot-free. Okay? So, whatever happens to the world, we're going to feel that. As a matter of fact, we're feeling that right now. Every step that they're taking, like the puzzle to bring the whole world into one world government, it's all falling in place, and we're living it right now. So we're we're in it right now, okay? Now we're not we're not losing our lives for for our faith yet, okay? Not yet. But so this is so important, guys. Uh, anyone, your, your your wives, your husbands, your children, anyone, your extended family, they got to get saved now. Because otherwise it's gonna to be too late. How many family members do we have that are not saved? And they say they're Christians, right? And they live their Christian life, okay? Which is nothing more than just, uh, they have the appearance. But they don't really live for God. They live for themselves. That's very, very dangerous. You know the truth and we know the truth so we need to uh, tell them the truth in love, okay? Even if they get mad, you got to tell them the truth in love. All right? Look look what's going to happen. Now, this is, the rapture has already happened. Chapter 13, we are we are already in heaven. The Christians are already in heaven. The ones that died in Christ have already been risen up. And they're already in heaven. So, we're not here no more. This is in the earth right now. Chapter 13, look what happens. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. This is John, the apostle. He's getting this revelation from God in the island of Patmos. Okay? And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, that's in the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. The dragon here is Satan. The dragon Satan gave him his power. So he empowers this man, okay? Gave him his power and his seats and great authority. Look at that. Gave him his power and his seat. He's basically just putting him up front, okay? He's going to run the whole show from behind, but he, this is the front guy right here. Two. And the bees which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as they were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. The whole world wondered, the whole world was amazed at the Antichrist, the beast. Why? Because his wound was what? It was healed. He was mortally wounded. He should have died, but then he's healed. And the whole world's going to go, oh, he's the one. And they're going to start following him now. Okay? We're not here anymore. Who's back? Who's on the earth now? Human beings. Who's on the earth? Every person that rejected Jesus Christ. Every person that said, that religion's not for me. Every person that said, well, I don't have time for that. No, no, no. I'm just going to live my life the way I want to. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear any more about religion. I don't want to hear about your Jesus. I don't want to hear about your church. I don't want to hear about your Bible. Just leave me alone. Those people are the ones that are going to be here for this. Okay? Because they rejected the free salvation that Jesus gives. Okay? And so, uh, verse number four. And they worship the dragon. Okay? And they worship the dragon, uh, Satan, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast. So they're worshiping Satan and the Antichrist, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Oh, he's the one. Look, he was healed. Who can go against him? He's all powerful. He is 
our leader now, okay? Verse 5, And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Forty and two months. Here is your math lesson. Come on now, scholars. This is your math lesson. Okay? As soon as the rapture starts, the church is taken up. The clock starts on what? Come on, scholars. What's happening now? The rapture just happened. Tribulation. Tribulation. How long? Seven years. Okay? So he is given power. The end background is given power. Okay? How much how much time is he given? Forty and two months. Forty and two months. Okay? I'll make it easy for you. Forty and two months is three and a half years. The halfway point out of seven. Get it? Christians go up. Tribulation begins. Here he comes. He's introduced. He's revealed. Powerful. The whole world worshiping him. How much time is he given? 42 months. So he continues through the seven years, right? Until the bam, halfway point. Okay? To the halfway point. Look what happens next. Six. And he opened his mouth and blast and blaspheme. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and then to dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. He will control the entire world. He's going to control the entire world. Okay? And he's going to make war with the saints. Well, who are these saints right here? Wait a minute. I thought all the saints went up in the rapture. So, so who are these saints in verse number 7 here? Those who are coming out of great tribulation. Those who are going to be saved during the great tribulation. Now listen. Listen very carefully. Those who have not heard the gospel. Because the ones that heard the gospel, they're already up. These in the tribulation haven't heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. If there was one here who heard the gospel and the rapture happened, he's left behind. That's right. So he's going to go in tribulation, okay? And when he sees all these things come, can he then say, okay, Lord, please forgive me. I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Save me. Can he do that? Mm -hmm. It's too late. No. He can't do that. Why? Because he rejected it his whole life. Take a person who lived 99 years. For 99 years, he heard the gospel and he said no. So why would he say yes and the 100 years? You see what I'm saying? It's not going to work. Okay? So these are the, the saints that are going to be saved during the Great Tribulation. Okay? Because they didn't know. Okay? And power was given, verse 7, power was given or all given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. Verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall they're going to worship him whose names are, now listen these people that are worshiping the Antichrist okay, you know that book in heaven that God has where he checks to see if your name is on it, it's called the book of life, guess what their names are not in there okay Look, verse 8. And all the dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not, whose names are not written in the book of life. Of the Lamb's slain from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus says, If any man have ear, let him hear. Okay? 10. He that leadeth, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay? This one is coming up out of the earth. Where did the first one come out of? The sea. The sea. Okay, now, the sea in the Bible, the sea and waters, it's always a picture of 
the nations. The nations, okay? He came out of the sea, okay? This one is coming up out of the earth. You see that? And, he, and it says in verse number 11, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns, like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Okay, here we go. What, what did we start talking about in this lesson? What did the lesson start telling us from the very beginning when we started? To look out for what? False prophets. How is this guy dressed? He's dressed like a what? Look at look at the. He's dressed like a lamb. Okay, and he spake as a dragon. Okay, let's put on our farmer's caps on. All right, farmer's cap, everybody. All right, I got chickens. What do you got? All right, I got dogs. What do you got? Got dogs? All right, farmer's hat. <clears throat> what's what's interesting about a lamb? What do you know about lambs? What's interesting about lambs? Lambs are, it begins like this, lambs are Danny. Lambs are what? Just come on, come on. It's it's a, it's a the what? Purity. So they're young. Okay, they're young. Lambs are? Followers, lambs are? Lambs are? Stupid. Lambs are, lambs are cuddly. Lambs are cuddly. You ever seen a little baby lamb? I just want to pick it up like a little puppy. You know, they just sit in your arms, okay? They're cuddly, they have little fur, right? Okay? They're very innocent, okay? And they are very, very dumb, okay? Very, very dumb. If you sneak up on a lamb and jump on it and go, ah! You know what it does? It falls to the side and faints. And just, okay? Lambs are very innocent. They're very, they're not, they don't have, okay. Lambs do not have any kind of defense. Okay? Like a dog has fangs. Okay? A goat has horns. Right? Uh, a leper has paws and teeth or a, or a bear has big paws, right? A lamb doesn't have any defense at all. Nothing. Zero defense. So he's excellent for who? Okay. For predators. They like to eat it. Easy, easy prey, right? Alright? So, does this look like an innocent lamb to you? Look at verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and his peg is a dragon. That doesn't even fit, does it? Sounds like he has a coat like a lamb. <laughs> But inside, there's a dragon, right? The Lord warned us about that, didn't he? Verse 12, and he ex exercised all the power of the first beast before him. So, okay, so now we have, we have, we have three, three persons here. Did you see that? Three persons. The Lord just revealed three persons to us, okay? Who's the first one? Danny. The Antichrist? Okay, he's called the beast. We call it that Christ. Okay, that's the first one. He better the see. Second one. The white. The one that. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. The dragon. Who's that? Satan. Satan. So that's two right there. And then now we see his one right here. That's three. Do you see that? Three. Okay? Why three? He's trying to be like. Exactly. Satan copies everything that God does. Why does he do that? He's always wanted to be like God. Always wanted to be like God. He wants to be God. He wants to take the place of God. Okay? Of course, uh, he will never be able to. He's a created being. He was created by God. So he'll never be able to do that. But he doesn't stop from trying. Okay? So he copies everything that God does. But he does the opposite when it comes to God is holy Satan's always wicked, okay? Uh, so he perverts everything. God said uh, uh, <clears throat> marriage is one man, one woman. Satan said a man and a man, a woman and a woman, okay? 
He does the opposite. He perverts everything that God does. Okay? So here he is, the three. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity, right? One God, three persons. Three persons, one God. Right? Well, he's doing the same thing here. He's got his three persons. He's got his he's got his Antichrist. So so Antichrist is like a what? His what? His son. He, so he's like a what? He's what? Like who? He's like Jesus. Okay? Does everybody worship Jesus? Well, the Christians do. But in, 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 in this time frame, they're going to worship the Antichrist. He's like their Jesus. You see, like their Savior. So he got, he's got the Jesus, right? And then, so they got the the, the son. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry to, to interject, but uh, just even further, the fact that he's trying so hard to mimic God. Um, the antic or the beast is, is wounded, just like Jesus was wounded on the cross. Yes, and he arose. And he rose. Yes. And just like him, exactly. he's, he's not necessarily arising, but he's healed. Exactly. On opposed to God, he arose and mm -hmm. conquered that. Yep, yep. That's exactly what happened. See, now you're thinking, now you're thinking. That's exactly right. Okay, so so then we have the uh, uh, the dragon. Okay, so what part does he play? He's the what? Father. He's like the father. He gives all the power, right? Mm -hmm. All the power comes from him. And then we have this other beast mm -hmm. who's dressed like a lamb, but he's speaking like a dragon. Mm -hmm. Who is he? He's a picture of who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You see that? So God has his three, Satan has his three. All right, so continue. Okay, so in 12, when we when we get the description of the of the uh, the one that's copying the, the Holy Spirit, verse 12 says, and he exercised, he, he, okay, when it says he in verse 12, he's talking about this beast in verse 11. You see that? Who is, who is trying to be like who? Okay. Look at 12. And he, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth. Look, he's the one that actually does the, the buying and stuff. Look. And he caused the earth, okay? And then which dwelt therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So he, he's like a... He, what is he like to the, to the Antichrist? What is he like? He's like, he's like, uh, like promoting him. Okay? And what does the Holy Spirit do? He promotes Jesus, right? So, and he, verse 13, he's the one, verse 13, and he do it, look at, he do it great wonders. Okay? Who is he? He's the, uh, the beast dressed like a lamb and the speaks like a dragon. He, 13, doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven uh, on the earth in the sight of man. So they get to see his power, okay? And this is not even the Antichrist. Do you see that? It's not even Satan. This is the, the, the beast is dressed like a, like a lamb speaks like a dragon. Verse 14, and deceiveth them, he's still continuing, same man, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of, of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. Okay? Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be what? Killed. So during the tribulation, okay, during the tribulation, if you do not worship, the beast, you will be killed. This is where the killing of who is going to take place. The Christians, they get saved during the tribulation. They will be killed because they are not going to take what? The mark on the forehead or on their hand. Because if you take the mark, it means you worship the beast. They will refuse it, therefore they will be killed. Okay? 16. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. How, how long in your life, when you were a Christian, how long did you believe 
The, the one doing all this was the Antichrist. Come on, be honest. Come on. Don't, don't tell me you already knew everything. You're an expert. You know everything. Don't tell me you didn't believe that it was the Antichrist doing all these things. Come on. Nobody's going to be honest with me this morning. Okay. Amen. I did. Amen. I thought the Antichrist was running the whole show. But is he? No. He's not, huh? He's not. Okay? And so... In verse 16, and he, he caused all both small and great and rich and poor and free bond to see the mark in the right hand or in the foreheads, and that no man, here it is, this is what's going to start tightening up, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of men, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Okay? For years now, they've been putting chips in people already, okay, for years. Uh, European countries already have been doing that for years already, okay? People that work for Apple, uh, Microsoft, and those big companies, they already have the chip, okay? And when it's lunchtime, they just go down to the lunch uh, cafeteria and then zoom, get their sodas and zoom, get their lunch and everything, okay? It's already it's already happening, okay? Is it, now they're just gonna begin to implement it on the people. Once they digitize the money, then they control us. Why? Can you do anything without money? Can you buy groceries? Can you go to Walmart? No. Okay? So that's where the chip, the mark is going to come in. Okay? Now we're not there yet, but we're very, very close. Very, very close. Okay? Satan is well able to provide any experience outside of the Word of God an unbeliever or a believer may seek. He is able to make miracles, okay? He can do anything, all right? And people are just, they're ready. People are ready. Listen, listen. Think with me. What is one thing that people are desperate for right now? One word. People all over the world are ready for this one thing right now. One word, it's a character trait. What is it? They're desperately desiring this in the world right now. Does the world look like is everything's working nice and peachy? Is it falling apart? Is the economy crashing all over the world? Everything right? There's war and everything right? It's not peace. Although they want peace, it's not peace. They're looking for something. The world wants something desperately right now. And when this man is revealed, he's going to step right in and take it. What are they looking for? Power. Power? power? Well, he's going to have power. Whoever does this is going to have power. Leadership. Leadership. Very good. Leadership. They want a leader. Do we have leadership right now? They want the issue. They want somebody to take charge. And everything is being set up just for the taking. Okay? Just for the taking. Look at that. We didn't even move one point. <laughs> <laughs> one point. But it was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Any, any uh, last shots? Comments? By the way, we're all. Uh, Satan has the world. God shows it to us plain as day in Matthew chapter 4, where Jesus was tempted and Satan took him on a high pedagogue and showed him all the kingdoms of the world as Paul was going to give unto thee. That's right. Now, he, got out he has the world. You know, and we're, uh, we're preserved by the Spirit of God. That's right. If he weren't here, we wouldn't be here, obviously. Mm -hmm. We'd be gone. Yeah. If he's gone, we're gone. That's right. And, uh, so we, uh, we, we're, we can be grateful for that. Yes. We have a, 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 a duty, as Craig was praying, that uh, we're to be equipped to tell the loss. Yeah. Give that's a gospel track. That's it. That's it. Always give a gospel track. Always. Yeah. I was uh, coming out of. I was, I was coming out of. Uh, uh, out of Lowe's, and I said, uh, I got to get the track and go back and give it that, that cashier because she was by herself, mm -hmm. and I was by herself. 
was like jet back to my vehicle, got two, and I, I saw a guy, and I said, oh, this, this will be my, I'll just give it to him, and then that will be done. Mm -hmm. That's a deception. She was supposed to get the track. Yeah. And I said, you know, Lord, you told me to get two. Well, one is for him, of course, and this other one is definitely for her. Yeah. But when she took it, you know, uh, uh, legally. Thank you. You know, and, uh, and I said, you know, Lord, the devil is so deceptive that he can, he, he tries to influence us in a way that deters us from doing the thing that God has directed us to do. Yes. You know, and, uh, and I told the man last night, I, I've been, you know, for the least little thing, I prayed and asked the Lord to help me. I was looking, looking for some screws in the house, and I could not find them. I stopped for a second, I said, well, he's got to help me. I picked up a drawer, because I was putting something back in my bedroom there. I picked up the drawer, walked back in there, and set it down, put the drawer in the, in the, in the dresser there, and I said, uh, this is my spray. They were screws. <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't thank the Lord. But you know, God, God gives us everything. Yes, you know, just really little things that we don't think yes. about, but he protects us. Absolutely. You know, and that's what we, uh, I think sometimes when people read the book of Revelation, they get, <clears throat> yeah. Well, you are going to need to fear if you know the Lord. Yeah, that's right. You know, he gives us everything. Amen. He protects us too. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord God, for the Sunday school class this morning. I pray, Father God, that you keep that first before us. Help us and remind us every moment, Lord God, that the most important thing for us to do right now is to tell Jesus, I mean, to tell people about Jesus, Lord. Family members, extended family, co-workers, anyone that you put in front of us, Lord God, uh, you're putting them there because you want us to tell them about Jesus. Lord. So just give us boldness, Lord, to do that. And we love you. We thank you. Bless the morning service to follow. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Let's go ahead and uh, push the button for me.